My name is Anthony Harris and I'm going to take you through an example of how to write a protocol. And I'm going to do this taking one of the protocols that was written and designed in our Asian regional course running Kathmandu, Nepal. So the title of this protocol is Management of Patients with Retreatment Tuberculosis in Western Nepal. And as you can see on the title page, we have investigators listed here, and we have their institutions. <clears throat> so for each of the investigators, you can see a number in superscript. For example, Mangal Tharu has superscript 1, Anthony Harris has superscript 2. And the numbers of these superscripts refer, in fact, to the institutions. Now, if you scroll down, you can see on the next page, the institutions here. So number one is the International Nepal Fellowship of Nepal, and number two is the International Union Against Tuberculosis and Lung Disease in Paris, France. So let me take you then to the background. So the background of a protocol needs to describe the situation, the country in which you're working, and basically the reason for why you or we are doing this particular study. So let me read this background to you. Nepal is a landlocked country with 75 districts divided in five geographically diverse development regions. The country has had a TB control program for many years and rigorously follows the World Health Organization DOTS principles. In 2011, the country notified 34,000 434 TB cases to the WHO, of which 2,882 8% were retreatment cases. In the same year, the country reported 213 cases of multidrug resistant TB, MDR TB, that is tuberculosis resistant to at least isoniazid and rifampicin, but estimated that there were 1,100 MDR-TB cases in the country, giving a case detection rate of 21% for 2011. Patients with MDR-TB are most likely to be those who have failed first-line treatment, have relapsed after completing treatment, or have returned after default. According to recommendations from the Nepal National TB program, all such patients are supposed to submit sputum specimens for culture and drug sensitivity testing, called CDST from this time onwards, so that drug sensitivity patterns can be identified and MDR-TB detected. One of the reasons for poor detection of MDR-TB in the country may be failure to obtain CDST in this at-risk group of patients. The logistics of getting sputum samples to a central reference laboratory, as is the case in Nepal, is not easy and has caused difficulty with CDST results in other countries of the world. We therefore carried out a retrospective study to determine whether the process of CDST worked well amongst retreatment patients in the Midwest region of Nepal, and we were further interested in the time taken for the procedures to take place. So we've set the background and now we describe the aim and objectives. The aim of the current study was to assess the CDST management of retreatment TB patients, defined as relapses, failures, or returns after default, in Midwest Nepal, who were registered between mid-July 2011 and mid-July 2012, one year. Specific objectives were to determine, firstly, the number and proportion of all registered TB patients who failed, relapsed, or returned after default. Secondly, the number and proportion of these retreatment patients who submitted and received sputum specimen results for CDST. And thirdly, the length of time for this process of submission and receipt of specimens at the Central Reference Laboratory in Kathmandu. So now we go on to describe the methods. First of all, 
study design. This is a descriptive cohort study of retreatment TB patients and the practice of CDST. Now, under setting, we have two headings, general setting and the Nepal National TB Programme. I won't read the general setting to you, but let me just give you the basis. We say that Nepal is a mountainous country. We say the population is 26 million. We say that in the Midwest region, there are 15 districts with a geographical diversity. The majority of the population is poor and of low socioeconomic status, and health coverage is provided to urban and rural areas. I'm going to take you through, however, the description of how we talk about the Nepal NTP, which is the Nepal National TB Programme. The country has a national TB programme with offices at the central level in Kathmandu, regional levels and district levels with diagnostic and treatment services integrated into general health care. TB case finding is passive and diagnosis established through sputum smear microscopy and chest radiography for pulmonary tuberculosis and other systematic investigations for extrapulmonary disease. All diagnosed patients are registered with a unique registration number, given standardized treatment and monitored for treatment outcomes according to national and international recommendations. All TB microscopy services and treatment are free in the country. If patients remain smear positive at five months or at the end of treatment, they are classified as failures. If patients default for two months or longer and return to treatment still smear positive, they are classified as return after default. If patients complete treatment, and subsequently develop smear positive TB again, they are classified as relapsed TB. In all of these patients, categorized as retreatment patients, it is recommended by the Nepal National TB Program that sputum is collected and submitted to the Central Reference Laboratory located in Kathmandu, the capital of Nepal, for CDST. Patients are then started on standardized retreatment regimens except for those with MDR-TB who are treated with second-line anti-tuberculosis drugs according to Nepal guidelines. In Midwest Nepal, retreatment patients are referred to the International Nepal Fellowship TB Referral Center, which is a regional referral center, and their sputum specimens are collected and sent from there to the Central Reference Laboratory in Kathmandu. CDST results are then sent back to INTH NTRC. While awaiting the CDST results, patients are referred back to their DOT center and started on a standardized retreatment regimen. If the results show MDR-TB, then the patient is changed to an MDR-TB treatment regimen. So under that setting, we have described how the process works. We then move on to the next heading, patient population. All retreatment patients diagnosed with relapse, failure and return after default in the Midwest region of Nepal and who were registered between the 16th of July 2011 and the 15th of July 2012 will be included in the study. So we're quite clear about who the patient population is. Data variables Sources of data and data collection is our next main heading. Data variables are listed according to study objectives. And the best way to do a protocol is then to spell out the objective with the variables that follow. So objective one is the number and proportion of all registered TB patients who failed, relapsed, or returned after default. Data variables during the study period include number of all registered TB patients, number of all those with retreatment TB stratified by relapse, failure and return after default. The source of data will be the 2012 Nepal National TB Report and records of the National TB Centre and Regional Director's Office. Objective 2. The number and proportion of these retreatment patients who submitted and received sputum specimens for CDST along with their results. 
Data variables include name, age, sex, TB suspect number, sputum specimen submitted to INF NTRC. The source of data will be the INF NTRC register. The other variables include name, age, sex, TB suspect number of sputum specimens received at the central reference laboratory, along with the sputum culture result, the DST result, and whether CDST results were received back at INF NTRC. The source of data will be the Central Laboratory Register and the INF NTRC Register. CDST availability and results will be searched for up to 12 months after the initial TB registration. Objective 3. This is the length of time for this process of submission and receipt of specimens of the Central Reference Laboratory. Data variables include date of sputum submission at INF NTRC, date of sputum receipt at the Central Reference Laboratory, and date of receipt of results back at INF NTRC. The source of data will be the INF NTRC register and the Central Reference Laboratory register. Data will be collected into a structure pro forma between March and September 2013. Our next heading is Analysis and Statistics. Data will be double-entered from the structure pro forma into EpiData. CDST results and time for procedures will be analysed for all retreatment patients and will be compared between those with failure and those with relapse and return after default using the chi-squared test. Levels of significance will be set at 5%. Ethics Approval. Now, under Ethics Approval, there are a number of subheadings I will quickly take you through and I will read what was said in this particular protocol. Ethics issues. Permission for the study will be sought from the National Tuberculosis Centre Nepal first and then local ethics approval will be sought from the National Health Research Council Nepal. Ethics approval will also be sought from the Union Ethics Advisory Group Paris, France. Data confidentiality. Data will be entered in a designed format based on the information recorded in the registers. Names will be used to trace patients from one register to the next, but confidentiality will be maintained by keeping data collection forms securely in a lockable cabinet, and the electronic data file will be kept in a password protected computer. Both data sets will be maintained securely for five days after completion of the study. Specific patient benefits. The results of this study will inform about management of CDST practices, and if there are logistic problems, these will be identified and hopefully resolved. This may result in better case detection for MDR-TB patients in Nepal. Community participation and benefits. These are likely to arise from the study in that CDST procedures may be improved and quickened up, resulting in reduced TB transmission, particularly that of drug-resistant TB in the community. Feedback and dissemination of results. The results of this study will be disseminated to healthcare workers in the NTP, laboratory technicians, and those working in INF, NTRC, and Central Reference Laboratory. The results will also be presented at national and international conferences and submitted in a peer-reviewed journal. Implications for policy and practice. There may be implications depending on the results of the study. It is possible that poor CDST practices may result in possible consideration of other ways of diagnosing MDR-TB, including gene expert mtb RIF. And finally, collaborative partnerships. These will be between Nepal NTP, the health workers of INF, the Central Reference Laboratory, the Union, and a special group in Chandigarh, India. Finally, we have a budget consideration. And here what we've written is, local funds will be used for this study for travel, stationery, and overnight accommodation in Kathmandu. The submission of the paper to an open access journal will be supported by funds from the Southeast Asian Union office. 
We then list our references, and you can see here about six references. And finally, and I won't go through this, we lay out what the data collection instrument will look like. And this is used then to populate the EpiData questionnaire and record forms, which is gone through in Module 2. Thank you for your attention.